Greetings, my esteemed Laddingtons. Today I want to talk about how magnificent I look. I haven't spent all of my narcissism points for this month, so I'm doing it now. I'm flexing a bit extra as well. Now, okay, not really. I have something I want to share, because in my latest video I talked about God, the One, the Divine, not to be confused with the Christian God by the same name. So whenever I say God, I mean the universe or the divine or rather the one. So that's what I mean with God. So we have here by Zachary Jill, Syncretic Indo-European Faith. Now Zachary has actually been with me for a few years now, so I appreciate you being with me for all of this time. And he has written this fine book, which I've read. And in it, I stumbled upon a nice description or a take on the one. So I will read it to you and you can decide for yourself if it makes sense or not. So here it goes. I prefer to use the human body as an analogy of the one. Imagine the human body. The cells within the body are humans, animals and life. They are created by, report to and rely on the organs. There are various types of cells and those that are more complex or more similar to organs would be akin to humans or the idea of demigods. The organs are the gods. The organs take care of these cells and produce them, but also rely on them themselves for communication and resources. Of these organs, the brain is what controls and regulates them all. Within this, I would opt that the brain represents the trinity or godhead. The nervous system, of which electric synapses of the fire element communicates through various frequencies, is how the cells and organs communicate to the brain and thereby to the one itself. These communications could be done through rituals, sacrifice, prayers and hymns, or meditation. The divine, or one, itself flows through these frequencies and lives within each of us. To keep the body healthy, you must maintain a balance. In the same way, a balance between order and chaos must be maintained as well. So, that is a quite good take on the one. Of course, you can use whatever metaphor or analogy as you want. In a recent video I made about a year ago, I said I made the following comparison. You have God and you have like an ocean. Everything's connected. So, the world ocean, it connects everything, but you also have separate seas and oceans, you have the sacred Baltic Sea and you also have the sacred Atlantic. They are in a way the same water, but they are also different. Same thing if we're talking about something like milk. So you have milk and you also have whey. They are the same. Both are milk, but they come in different uh, shapes. So, so many different good analogies you can describe the one. Now, something to point out as well that the one is beyond human comprehension. So that can be worthwhile keeping in mind whenever we're talking about the divine. Now I also have another quote from this book which I thought would be worth sharing with you all in regard to order and chaos. So he notes about chaos that it is the force of chaos that gives rise to birth, death, destruction and creativity. Chaos is the turning of the wheel, the burning of the old, the repurposing. If it weren't for chaos, then there would be nothing for order to place in order or to establish into a pattern. This is why the so-called forces of light and goodness are reliant on the chaos. One might think of it as that if you do not have sadness, then your happiness means nothing, or that if you do not have faults, then seeking perfection and purity is impossible, as it wouldn't exist by reflection. So, quite a nice passage there as well. Now, since we are talking about chaos, something to note here as well, in most myths you have dragons, and dragons, they aren't evil per se, they are an expression of chaos that you can tame. So, uh, great stuff, great stuff indeed. So, yeah, I just wanted to share those two insights, and I wish you all a high Thumos day ahead. Thanks for watching, and thank you for your support, XXO. Boom!